to our fall kickoff classes for the year 2013. Student Support Services, part of the TRIO program, has been hosting this event for the last couple of years. Uh, this is the first time we do it in conjunction with RISE. But guys, I want to welcome you to our event, and as an event, as part of the family of diversity academic support services here on our campus. Guys, once you leave RISE, we want you to come to the SSS program, because we want to be able to continue giving you a, a helping hand as you go on to get your college degree. But before we continue, Angela is going to go ahead and uh, just uh, introduce you to a couple of people that are with us today. How's everyone doing today? I know, I'm tired. We're all a little bit tired. We have everybody doing today. Good. I think you guys are going to have a really high energy night. You're going to enjoy uh, the speaker today. I've seen some videos and he is listed. So um, we're really excited to have you here. Again, we're partnering with um, Student Support Services and we are the RISE program. RISE students out there, I'm very happy that you're here. We'll have some of your um, teammates here, other RISE students coming in just in a little bit after their classes, so fret not, those tables should be filled up here in a little while. Um, so the RISE program is here for you guys as uh, a support, as a help somehow, you've got to do the 10 hours of homework, you've got to do the research, volunteer work, and how many old RISE students do you have, like from last year, the year before, you're already, okay, you guys, you went through the program, you're alive, right? You're kicking, it's okay, you did the 10 hours, and it was worth it. So please know the current RISE students that it's going to be worth your time, and I want to make it worth your time. So like we said, we definitely want you to go to student support services whenever um, you're in RISE or whenever you finish RISE. So that's even more support for you guys. Um, special shout out to some of the people that work in the Division of Institutional Diversity. If you could please rise so that you can be recognized. Come on, guys. And she is over the Inclusion Leadership Program. So for those of you who did it during high school, she's also been going to high school and work with high school kids this year. And she runs the program here at OSU. So once you get a try, you can actually apply for an Inclusion Leadership Program, which is really cool one that she can talk to you about. Uh, we have the Director of Diversity Academic Support, and I'm Bob. Um, please stand up, Dr. Joe, that too. Okay, thank you guys, and I'm going to go ahead and step off the stage so I won't be the fan of my cup, but I'll be in the sitter on to ask me any questions you have. Thank you, Angela. Of course, guys, ain't nothing that we do would be possible with, the, without the next young man who's going to be talking to you onto the stage. Our program started back in 2002, that is the Student Support Services Program. We haven't had the advantage to be here as long as RISE has. But guys, for the first time that I stepped on this campus, we've been able to move with our program, and we're seeing the biggest benefits now because of the support that we get from the university. We do different things like grant aid scholarships. That's partially money coming from the U.S. Department of Education, but the other part of that's coming from the institution at OSU. And guys, if you don't have the administrative support to do things and move your programs, your program will never be successful. The reason our programs are a success is because of the gentleman that I'm going to introduce right now. He is the VP of Institutional, Associate VP of Institutional Diversity. He's our big boss, and without him, it wouldn't be possible to do the great things that we do and provide the services that we do for you guys. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Jason Curtis. Right there, and then, uh, to be here. So, 
Excuse me. So we certainly appreciate that. But uh, from my standpoint, I want you to know that uh, things work well uh, here at Oklahoma State, and particularly the Division of Institutional University, primarily because we've got fantastic folks uh, that uh, here working with you every day. So I tell them all the time, uh, well, it may appear that I get the credit. Uh, they're the ones that really do good work uh, because they're the ones that meet with you, talk with you help you work through things to a much greater degree uh, than, than I do. And so I am certainly very appreciative of them and their efforts. Uh, they soon came on board and the on fire and this is just an absolutely wonderful program. Uh, before I leave the voice to my I'll study a couple of quick things uh, that are there, uh, and Sue's mentioned, uh, talking about the program being here to help. Rise and that's for SSS. Um, I'm not only an administrator, I'm a faculty member who taught here for almost 20 years in political science. The single most important thing uh, that I can tell you uh, to be successful here at Oklahoma State University uh, is there's one obviously going to class and taking a note to the other class. Uh, and, and two is uh, going to see your faculty and ask them for help. But I told students, so I taught them every day on the course, uh, which was my intro course, and so many of you may have every day on the course, and you're probably taking that one. So, but it's a great course, but uh, the, the thing that I, that I always encourage the students uh, in that class was to come and ask me for help. Uh, and, and that's important because that faculty member is your single most resource in that classroom. And, and I tell you that, I've told my students that for years, not because I'm the smartest person in the world of American government, but I'm the guy that they can test. And, and so I can tell you, you, know, you don't need to spend a whole lot of time on, on, on federalism, but you should spend quite a bit of time on the Constitution. Oftentimes we'll be the truth. A lot of people think that the faculty's job and our role is to see how many students can not do this. That is the absolute opposite. And so when I'm telling you, and you go into a faculty member's office and, and, and they're telling you things, they're giving you clues. We want you to be successful. Our goal is to, not just to bring students here, but to bring students to Oklahoma State University. And that's actually the most. But aside from that, when you're successful, we're successful. Right? When students do well in my couple of classes, then it means I get well. It means I get something right in transmitting the knowledge. Uh, but certainly very, very important in terms of diversity. Uh, I came here on was 30 years ago as a, as a movie represented, uh, a first generation of low income students from inner city here. Uh, and so I tell people to understand very clearly. The guy that you see here today, what did the guy show up 28 years ago? Uh, and, and so there, there were some things that had to happen in my life and some commitments that I had to make quite frankly some table classes. Like giving up the beautiful Friday afternoon to be here, uh, getting access to resources that are designed to help me be successful uh, here at Oklahoma State University. And so, uh, but, but with that, the thing that I had to learn very quickly was one, I was here because I earned the right to be here. Uh, you may learn, I don't know if you guys talk about the, the notion of the imposter syndrome. Uh, we see it a lot when, uh, with our diversity. And so I would tell you, I would tell you, I would see you are here because you earned the right to be here. And because you earned the right to be here means that you are prepared and equipped to be successful and to be more successful than anyone else. The person that you have to convince of that is you. And, and so we'll do everything in our power to support you, to facilitate your success here at Oklahoma State University. But, but the, the, the burden of the task uh, falls on you. Uh, I just had a meeting and, and, and did a tease a little bit about that. It was a really hard uh, professor. Uh, and my response is always the same. Every class should be hard. If it were easy to earn a college degree, this world would be a more people in this world. My parents always taught me growing up, anything worth having doesn't come easy. And that's the same for a college degree. You know, there's 
I want it to be for real, okay? I mean, act like you like me. I don't want to be like that. You're not saying that's a little bit face right now. I need to uh, make some noise like, all right, how about this? We'll just undo it for you, okay? Uh, I need you to be excited, so we're just going to ask you a question for me. Uh, this will be inspired by a good friend of mine, not really that good of a friend, but we got Little Jack, okay? I'm sure you all know who Little Jack is, right? These three words were what? <laughs> yeah. And I'll be no, 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 no. Oh, you thought your little job was down the street? No, not your cousin, little job, no. What? Yeah. And okay. Simple enough, isn't it? So I need you all, not to have any stuff real quick, and not to have any face each other. Turn the face this way. Turn the face this way right now. Turn the face this way right now. I need you all to bring a little down here to me three questions. I'm going to ask you. Your answer will be what? This is doing the inside voice right now. It'll be what? <laughs> Who did that? Who did that? <laughs> the baby Jesus took over did it. The spirit got you did it. You know what happened? Wait, what's your name? Adrian, I'd like to know. I got some three for you. My favorite people that I asked for, okay? I'll be there another job. But I got some for you, Adrian. All right, cool. So the three answers will be what? Yeah. Okay. I like how you're looking at me like I don't know what I'm doing. Like I do, but I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. You all keep up. Alright, first question now. Do you all mind if I get this thing going? Yeah! Three first off, we just is gonna mess up in the very beginning. We just gonna answer how you wanna answer this. But you were committed though, I like that. Just committed. What? Yeah. Okay. The next week we're doing shades and colors, okay? This <laughs> week. How about this? I'll make it really, really easy, right? I'm going to point to you all, and you all are going to say, What? <sighs> that was good. But, like, I'm going to point to you and you're going to go, What? Yeah, and then? You all are still sitting by the Are you all tired? Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. Like, you're tired? Oh, my <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna ask you to get it all wrong. I tricked you. I didn't get it right. Real quick, now here's the deal. I don't know if you all can tell, but I'm just about uh, thinking this. Actually, the last three out of four weeks, I've been on like a nonstop tour. I've probably traveled close to 15,000 miles in the last two weeks. I've been a bunch of different cities, states, bunch of stuff, and I literally lost my voice. Last week, like to the end of last week, and, and literally, I'm just now getting it back. Yesterday, I could not talk about this at all, so I'm glad I have you back. So I'm a little bit excited about that. But here's the thing I too am tired, I promise you. Matter of fact, the last four nights ago, I got it literally at 4 a.m., and every day it's ended probably roughly 1 a.m., and then I woke it back up at roughly 3 a.m. to catch flights most of the time. When I'm done with you all, I'm going to fly and get home for roughly 48 hours, and I'll be flying back out to the exact same thing next week. So if you're tired, I understand. Like, I can't. I can't. But here's what I'm going to promise you all. Just in the spirit of time. Because time is what I respect. I respect time. Time is absolute. There's one thing, I mean, there's, there's no replacement for time. There's one thing that ends. If I do what I'm supposed to do today, the reason why they brought me in, like, today will be a great day. And at the end of today, even though it ends later on tonight, at the end of this, you all be thinking, man, it flew by. That's what I wanted to feel like. Because you all would just be thinking and contemplating. And this would be somewhat of a life changing experience for me because you've never met me before, most of you. But this is what I understand about time is that it passes. It passes. It passes. So I will respect your time. And in the spirit of respecting your time, I promise not, not to waste yours. I will not waste your time. If I, did, if I just traveled across the street, I wouldn't waste your time. I don't look for the port by this morning, go to the airport, call the plane, you know, land, okay, see, go up there, I want to have a little, now I'm here. I will not waste your time, because I understand how quickly time moves, but we rush time, don't we? Like, what's today? I mean, today's Friday, right? Some people are already thinking, you know, where's the club tomorrow night? You're like, I'm going to shut the club down. <laughs> <laughs> it outfit is already laid out, isn't it? You're like, oh, yeah. I'm killing them all. Like, you know what I'm saying? I didn't know how take back the next day, whatever, I'm not judging you. And that's what might happen, that's what may happen, right? But we rest time without your fault, we've been rushing time since the beginning of time. Like when you were in junior high, 
you were kind of like, oh my god, this place sucks. Can't wait to go to high school. Get to high school, like, yeah, oh. Oh my god, this place sucks. Can't wait to go to college. Towards the end, you'd be like, oh my god, this place sucks. Can't wait to go to the real world. To get to the real world, like, Oh crap, this place sucks. You just want to go back to kindergarten and have a pre and a pre sandwich. No, you just want to have a little bit of recess to recharge your It's Like, I understand how quickly time moves on problems, and that's way should. Also, I just tell you all kind of what you expect to me at the end of this thing. This is also what's happened. I told you I'm going to give you 110% of me. Now, it's up to you what you do with you. I'm going to do my part to make this a great experience. That's what I'm going to do. Now, you have to decide if you're going to do the same. I'm going to say that because I know there are some people in I refuse to have a good time no matter what. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, friend, like no matter what, they're going to have a bad time. I can set myself on fire, walk on my head, do a car roll in the back of the I'm like, ah, he was all right. And like, you're pretty much, that's what you're doing, right? I mean, I feel like that person exists all the time. Like, no matter what you do, they just want you to recognize is the person is not entertained. It's not educated. It's not anything. There's no, 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 like, raise your hand if you've ever dealt with a trip killer before. Cool, if your hand is not raised, you are the trip killer. Look around here. I don't want to tell them so publicly, but it's you. And it's you. Like, no matter what, they always have some bad to say. Like, oh my god, look, the sun is shining. They're like, I heard it's in the rain there. No, 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 no. Go up your hands. Enjoy yourself. Don't be so upset, right? You may as well. Like, you're here. You're committed to being here. You're here. So, what's, what are you going to do with that time? Are you going to be made popular because you spent all of your time telling people how terrible of a time it could have been? Then you look stupid for going in the first place. Or being there and not taking full advantage of this. Because it's an awesome, awesome, awesome opportunity. I know, based on numbers, that there are people that could be here right now and they're not here. Like, raise your hand. You know that could be here, but they're not. Or someone that should be here, but they're not. Raise your hand. Let me show you. Cool, they had some good excuses, didn't they? They were like, uh, I gotta go to work. They don't even have a job. You know what I mean? It's like, what? All they're going to do is sit in the room, check their Facebook stats, and no one's going to like, that's what they're going to do all day. You've done it before. <laughs> oh, I'm going to shut them down. This clip. No, like, oh, man, maybe long time of day. Maybe I should have posted this again. Believe it, I didn't forget about it, right? We've all done that before, but uh, just me. <laughs> I know what happens. Now, you also have my book. Now, each, the, the end of each one of my books, I have four of them. And I think two of them are here today. There's uh, some places for you all to write. So you all can write this down if you want to, because throughout the day I'm going to give you all some, I'm telling you some really deep points that are simple to apply. It will help you. Five people we're going to discuss over this next 45 minutes or so. Piece of cake, there they go. It would be be creative, be your own best friend, be present, be consistent, be resilient. Those would be the five points. Alright? It would be be creative, be your own best friend, be present, be consistent, be resilient. Those will be the five points. Let's say Matthew Parts today, these will be the, like the first level of these five points. It'll be like we're going to graduate, excuse me, from one point to the next. If you realize that the longer we're here, I'll continue to challenge you all because that's also why we're here, so I can challenge you all. If you all are on Twitter and Facebook and all that stuff, at the real stand, B is my hashtag, so that is my, my Twitter handle, so if you all need me to do to me, whatever to you all can remember. I don't want there to be any excuses when you leave here today and you're not successful. No excuses, none. That's the problem with spending time with me. I hold myself accountable. Just to be advised and the four days hold you all accountable. To be better today than you were yesterday. I'm not one of those people that are, I'm not going to allow you to be who you want to be. I'm going to talk to you and we're going to talk about who you're supposed to be. There's a difference. Not who you want to be. But who you're supposed to be. Completely different. Five points. Be creative. Be your own best friend. Be present. Be consistent. Be resilient. So I guess I'll tell you a little bit more about me. Just to let me all know a little bit about me. I'm, uh, I'm recently married to celebrate the year anniversary. Clap it up for you. Clap it up for you. Yes. 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 But uh, can, I, uh, can I tell you all how it goes? Can I tell you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? Okay. Check this out. I don't know 
many of y'all have ever had one of those moments where you wish you had your own theme music? You know what I'm talking about? Originally, we were going to be on the beach in Mexico. It would have been a lot like this. Go ahead. Trying to be like someone else. I 
tell you this, nice. Being you is a full-time job. Why waste your time trying to be like someone else? Think about this. Being you is a full-time job. And I don't know what's going on in your life. I don't know. Something, because we all are going through something. You know what I mean, that's something. And you don't want everyone else to know about that one thing you may be super insecure about that even your closest friend doesn't know that thing. Like everyone experiences something, goes through something. Your ability to be creative is what will save you. Like when you decide to be someone else, you get so lost in character, you know what I mean? Who knows the cool guy? You ever been the cool guy before? I'm talking about like that. You ever seen somebody so cool they don't even know who they are? Like they're so stuck in coolness. They don't, they don't laugh at anything. Nothing impresses them. They never have a good time with anything unless they're doing it. And it's kind of sad, right? It took me a while to understand this. I'm like, man, it sucks to be the cool guy. Because you get to a point where you grow up and you realize what cool really is. And it's not half the things being portrayed in the world today or on television. It's not. It really isn't. How do you explain, how do you explain people, say you happy people, that are super duper rich, super duper gorgeous, getting past the surgery? How can you explain? Good about steady trying to look at somebody else when they're finding their own skin so that we see, right? But that would only prove it them too. They too have that something that no one else knows about that they're trying to hide through these surgeries or through these attitudes or whatever it is. So I was highly, highly, highly encouraged you to be creative. The world will recognize you at some point you make that pay attention. Can I move on? Please say yeah. 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 I like that. Be your own best friend. Anyone know what I mean by when I say be your own best friend? No wrong answers. Entry. What's up, dude? What is it? And it's very good to be able to laugh at yourself. It, that's important. God, I don't think you should be able to laugh at other people when you laugh at yourself. But it's not fair. It is not fair. For you're absolutely right. And you have to be able to, like, you have to know you better than anyone else knows you. Right? You have to know you better than anyone else on planet Earth knows you. Guess what? I'll tell you this. Maybe you have some friends in the room. Your friend might tell you, I know you. And theory is great. And theory is perfect. And people are saying, like, no, that's not true. Your best friend is just willing to admit more about you than you are. That's what the truth is. Like, your BFF, they know about that long middle toe that you don't want anyone to know about. And that's why you're going to flip flops. Oh my God, the long middle toe. Like, that's what they know that you want to tell them. That's why she doesn't wear flip flops. They know, okay? They know about that. You don't want to tell anybody about flip flops. Like, you'd be wearing boots. Not you're not going to be wearing them. Like, who, who wearing the Uggs in the room? See that long middle toe. Right? Embrace that little toeness. Like those kind of things. Like embracing who you are, knowing who you are, being your own best friend, so you don't end up somewhere that compromises who you are. Perfect example. I think this is just kind of life's test. Like, you know, I feel like we all end up someplace that you know you don't belong. Like where you've ever been someplace and you know you, you know you didn't belong there. This was you, you're like, I swear to God. If I make it out of your mind. <laughs> I'll never, ever come back again. The next month, you're like, I swear to God. Whenever you survive the first time, you're like, I can do it again and again, right? Being your own best friend means getting to know you. Like taking some time for you. Like one of the little nuances about yourself that everyone doesn't recognize. I laugh at myself all the time. I just realize that now, no, I've been this for a very long time. But sometimes I try to, you know, just check myself. I'm a grown man now. So as a grown man, I should be able to handle scary movies. Let me be perfect out to you all right now. I do not do scary movies. I cannot. Like, raise your hand if you love scary movies. I can't hang out with any of you all. I'm honest. I have an attitude when people ask me to go see scary movies. I saw the first one on like, took me on accident. I was ruined. What? I thought I was taking 5 a.m. Fully cold and fully lit house. I didn't want to go to sleep. Like, I just know how I have memories that see an army too. And I like that movie. But in, the, in, the, in my dream, I was fighting man who was a centaur. Do you know what a centaur is? Let a centaur walk through the door and everyone's looking at me, judging me. Let a centaur a half man, half horse walk through the door. Everybody is leaving, and I'm first, okay? But I just know me. I realize and get to know me. I, I have a very good imagination. 
vivid, super vivid imagination. So when I see movies, I feel like I'm in the movie. I feel like I am saving in the movie. Like I want you to get out of it. Like I go see stressful movies, I need to smoke. And I don't even smoke, you know what I mean? Like I don't sleep. Like I am completely exhausted when I go see certain movies to the point where I'm like, I can't do it anymore, I quit. Like the last stressful movie I saw, the most stressful movie was taken to. Have you seen that movie? That movie is the truth. But I'm like, you know what? There's a third one's gonna be called Taking Three to the Funeral. You got it in this one, okay? I'm not coming to save you again, girl. I'm exhausted. It'll be Taking Three to the Obituary. I can do it. Like, I just know, I know how I am. I know how I am. And everyone doesn't want to embrace who they are. And you know who I am. I'll tell you this. I mean, in, in, brief, in this brief story, I'll just tell you this. And, uh, I was born right outside of Chicago, a lot of my family are in the inner city. Like some of the stuff you read about, read about and see on the news, they're looking at that kind of stuff. I, I've seen it from distance and sometimes up close, but my parents did the best they could to get the hell away from that, okay? I grew up in the suburbs for the most part. Alright? I've seen this stuff, but I live in the suburbs. That's why I grew up in the suburbs. And I wanted to take advantage of that opportunity that some of my cousins and family members people I know did not have. So it didn't make any sense for me to now go to college and pretend to be something I'm not. Let me tell you something about Stan here for a second. I am not a fellow. I'm not. Tell me how much it was. But then reality comes. And then someone asked me to introduce myself. And I said, my name is Stanley David Pearson II. The <laughs> There's nothing scary about that. You know, like I said, it was just my name. There's nothing scary about like, it. No one is running when they hear Stan is coming to look for him, okay? It rhymes with something. Stan, the man is coming for you. Who cares? Feels like something you can beat up, right? I just knew me. I, I grew up, honestly, with none of it. It's crazy. I feel a bit older as I think about this, but I, I don't know if I ever owned pants that gave me gold below my waist once I pulled them up above my head. I don't even know if I owned a pair, but my mom doesn't have it. I mean, I, I had khakis and polos a lot of the time, or jeans that fit. That was me, so I could not pretend that I had grown up in some inner city experience where I was fighting for my life every single day just to please somebody who's never going to accept me anyway and is probably be, be trying to seek out my friendship because I'm a good person. And not just because I wear my pants or my butt. That didn't make me. I had to stop pretending. I pretended for too long. Maybe some of us in the room, you pretend for too long, and then you realize, that, what is it doing to you? It's taking away from you. I feel like you pretend to be something, and now you're taking away little, small pieces of yourself. And then you grow up, and you need to forget who you are. Again, for people that you may not even ever see again. I mean, it probably brought me to the me today, is for a very long time, heck, I was, uh, it was like I was a black man from my black friends. You ever hear that before? Uh, too much. Let's say I was too black for my white friends. So we know I have no idea what I'm talking about right now. But I'll tell you this, I feel like there's a point in life where you realize you're different. And I'm happy. And you just realize that you're different. Like you're from a different family. You may talk different, eat different things, speak different languages. You don't realize that when you're younger, then you get older, it's like, oh, something's different. And I think it's okay to embrace that. It's all right. There was a time I might say we're all the same. We're all great. I don't see color. <sighs> it sounds great. And in theory, it's perfect. Yes, it of course it is. However, how can I really love you for you? How can I truly be your friend? I think that our experiences are the same. There, there could be more than life. Like you have a completely different life than I have. Completely different, completely different experiences than I have. So how can you truly be friends if I don't know you for your particular experience, for you? I mean, the things that make me cry, that I may never understand what it feels like to cry about those things. How can I really be your friend if I think we're the same? Because I'm pretty sure that we've all had those experiences. I don't know if y'all have ever been so upset. You couldn't laugh, you couldn't cry, you were just stuck. Anybody? Like, it was not the proper emotion that you could be you were stuck. I think that happens. We have to know ourselves very, very well. You have to. When you're your own best friend, you know yourself well. And sometimes I feel like people kind of tell you who they are. You know what I mean? They kind of let you know how they can be. I think it happens a lot in relationships. 
You know what I mean? Like you find out how people really can be. Like most of us, you didn't even meet your crazy you until you were in a relationship. Like raise your hand if you've ever been in a relationship before. Raise your hand if you've had, keep your hand raised if you've ever met the crazy you before. Like you didn't know crazy you exist to crazy you. Hey, I'm crazy. Like, what? Is that what you How many of you are in a relationship and you've not met your significant other's crazy you yet? You know what I mean? Like they're, they're super nice now. Like, oh my gosh, they're so nice. You haven't seen the crazy they yet, but you know you're crazy. There are some things that I think people do to let you know they're running that you. Am I right? Like they give you they give you clues sometimes. Like I love music, so I feel like sometimes people give you music and clues. I think that's music for entertainment purposes. I feel like some of people. They listen to music for other reasons. They listen to music to tell you a story, to tell you how they feel, like if you ever left them or something, you know what I mean? Like if that break, like they let you know before you ever break up what this breakup's gonna be like. You know what I'm saying? For example, like, go, go ahead, give me a song like this. I mean, I tell you, this is a perfect example. Go ahead, yeah, it's good. Guess what? I'm, I'm gonna show up like. 
Right? That's how you do it. Huh. No, we're going to be in there. No, I'm not, I'm not kind of this. I'll say, I don't want to say this to you. This is somebody else. He used to cop. The door was set up where there was a computer, like facing that way. Literally, the father's thing was drop the hand on the keyboard. So anytime someone walked in the door, they would look like they were working. But sometimes people do these kind of crazy things, right? Same thing with school. Like, if you ever had a professor, if you ever had a professor, you did not like it. Of course, me too, when I was in school, I'm like, guess what, professor? I don't like you. So I'm not going to study for the next test. <laughs> F. I hit that thought all the way through. You know what I mean? Like, any plans all messed up. But you don't realize it. You're actually hurting yourself, punishing yourself. My mom always said, my mom always tells me, always be you regardless of who other people are going to be. Always be you regardless of who others are going to be. Sometimes you're like, you know, they're mistreating me, so now I'm going to mistreat them. That's not even in your character. It's not even who you are. But you realize that if you do that enough, it does become you. Now you're confused. Who am I really? And the saga continues. We have to be present in these moments. Like in moments like this, if you decide, all right, I'm here to whatever time, I'm here. I'm not promoted. I'm in here. Because these are things that are going to help me get through, you know, tough times. Because I feel like we celebrate defeat more than celebrate victory. Like, you can major in, in celebrating defeat. We've read that. Like, I actually have breakups and stuff. Like, you know, like, what's the longest it's ever taken you to get over a breakup? You can yell it out. And then, a year, a couple years, some months. Like, we're not trying to get over that. Wait, 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 you got a bunch of heartbreaks over here. You're like, man, I don't care what we're going to do. What happened to you? You all just, you all get what goes on. Well, yeah, like two days. Two days, he said. So call me Jay-Z, he's going to go on to the next one. I understand. I understand. Me too, man. Hey, man, I tell you what, how many of y'all have been in a relationship as bad as being on TV with the cameras right there? You know what I'm talking about, right? Like, super bad. I think she's about to happen. I, I wouldn't want those not to get my heart broken either, boy. I don't wish it on the end of that. Well, I'm not wishing on that. But tell breakups are really, they can be tough sometimes. So think about this. Worst breakup you've ever been through? Weeks. A couple of days. Weeks. Months. Years for most. And I mean, like, really over. I don't mean, like, over, like, some of you all, you're pretty sick and over, but let your ex walk in the door and say, oh my god, here, how did they find me? They're always everywhere I am. My ex is just like you stand. Your ex is white. No, your ex is not like me. What is wrong with you? Like, everyone you see reminds you of your ex. A song comes on you like, oh my god, who's that song? Like, I mean, truly over it. Like, you don't care where they are. That's what I'm talking about. Weeks, months, years. Now, think about this. How long is the best, let's say, vacation you've ever been on? How long does that feeling stay with you? Maybe until you get home? Then you have the best vacation of your life. You get home and you're like, my life sucks again. <laughs> no, I hate myself. Right, right, right. Here's the thing about that. Worst breakup you've ever been through? Weeks, months, years ago. Best time you've ever had in your life on vacation? As long as it took you to get back home. Sometimes I feel like we lose more than we win because we celebrate defeat more than we do our victories. You see, today at the end of the day, today is some kind of victory day, like a good feeling kind of day. These are the ones we have to celebrate more. Why? Because one of those tough times when you can't lie, you can cry, you, can, you just get stuck. One of those feelings could come for you. And when that feeling comes, you need a moment of goodness to help you rise above it. I only know this because I've been to school. I've spoken at Virginia Tech. I've spoken in Northern Illinois. I've been to a place where bad things are happening. And guess what I find the coincidence? Is they all look just like you. Just like us. Just like us. They're no different. But something happens. I feel like no matter what, I feel like something happens to everyone. You just, just you can't take it. Like you get to a certain level, and you just can't take it. It can be some kind of pain, some kind of stuff. Whatever it is, I don't know. And if you don't have the right tools, the right skill set to get you beyond a horrible time, you will begin to feel as though you cannot survive whatever's going on. Then you stop going to class. Then you stop taking your tests. Then you stop leaving your room. I mean, it's a lot like that. It's very it's slowly progressive, and then it's just all over. You can't get away from 
And some of you smiling right now may have visited that moment in their life before. You have to have the right tools to get you past some of these moments that some of your closest friends don't even know about. Don't even know about. I mean, it's like sometimes you just drive those moments that people don't even know about. Those moments. Do you want to tell someone that you don't know what they think about you and them? That's why the, the part right before that being your own best friend is so very important. Because when you're able to be present and just relax in the, in the greatness of a day, how important that can be. I feel like when you're present, sometimes you just have to let the world just go by and just take a deep breath. You ever had that before? It's like, have you ever done that? Just like, let the, just roll the windows down. Let some soft music play, whatever it is. You know, like you did something just super duper chill. Sometimes you were, you ever just been driving angry before them? Who knows an angry driver? We should be angry. Some of you are the angry driver. You know what I'm talking about. You all ever cut someone off and then end up at the stop with them? Hey, man. I thought I'd never see you again. Here we are. You know, super loud, right? Just in a hurry for no good reason. But I feel like sometimes, you have to just enjoy the day. Enjoy your drive. Right? What's your name? What's that? Gary? Gary. Gary. And how long has it been your name? Quit messing up, man. I'm just kidding. Gary. Have you ever had one of those days where you're just kind of driving, enjoying life, when it's kind of going on? <laughs> You've never had one of those days before. Really? I'm actually glad you're here. Do you have like a BFF, like a best friend? Kind of like that you don't know, huh? <laughs> Not really? Like, who do you sit next to right now? I'm not a friend, he says. We all know how that turned out in the end. I'm just kidding, though. I'm just kidding. I feel like you're in the same start. You say it. I feel like you're in the same. I feel like if you were, you all might want to take a drive together. Be friends. Friends take drives together, don't they? Everyone now. Friends take drives together. Kind of chilling out, enjoy themselves, listen to some good music. I feel like if you were driving, you could play your own theme music, man. It might be a song, something like this. Go ahead. Shoot. You're singing, you ready? Let's get the cars and have a great day. Yeah, see? Safety first. Hey, how you doing? What's your name again? Snapshot, what was it? 
that's how we get in the water. But hey, I do like some of the drink, not like a hollow, that's when they do some water and some juice and like that, right? Right, and that's usually not the kind of conversation that kicks off your club. But is it? Let me know if you've had those kind of conversations recently. Usually it's not much conversation, is it? Usually it sounds out like this. Hey! I don't know me. I mean, you, know, I mean, you would be super duper wild, crazy, 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 
What does that have to be with all your social media sites? Like all those little prints that you have and stuff and the little costumes that's not even Halloween. It doesn't have to be on your social media sites. Why don't they like me for me? Oh, I don't know if I see everything else around me. I mean, why would I? I mean, logically. Think about how people think. Think about how you think. I just wanted to make sense to you. So at some point in life, you're not wanting that dream job, that awesome opportunity, and someone is telling you no, based on what they saw you do, that you didn't even know they saw. I'm working with companies a lot, like a few weeks ago, I worked with GE, I worked with Pepsi, JC and some other uh, corporations calling now, and the conversation is that they're not all getting resumes anymore. Nah. A lot of them are asking for social media handles. What? What? Some of you are like, oh, I'm smarter than them. I don't have one. <laughs> well, in theory, it's genius. And logic is completely stupid. Because then they're saying, well, if you don't even know how, you know, if you can't be relative and be able to relate to the new times, why would I hire you in the first place if you don't have something as simple as a social media outlet? That kind of stuff. I'm telling you, these kind of things are happening. I don't care if it's 17, 18, or 24, 28, 30. It really doesn't matter. But it's the truth. How do you want people to know you? Is what it comes down to. We do a lot of fun things. We do a bunch of fun things that don't include something that doesn't make sense. Consistency. Understand as people, judge based on consistency. You can make it very easy for them to like you, to want to be around you, to help make you successful. Or you can make it very difficult. Again, some of y'all are not listening to my thing. Stan, I'm not the leading man, can't you? I like the picture I had my leg, hop up on the girl, and I was doing the camp bomb. It was a great night, Stan, and I'm not the leading man. Well, guess what? That girl was still single now, and I married my wife. That's pretty much how that broke down. But I just know how I am. I knew the kind of people that I wanted in my life. You know what made, what made sense to me? I don't do everything perfect. I don't plan to be. I just know that I try to be better today than I am yesterday. That's it. That's it. Some of you don't even realize that you're probably tagging some pictures that you don't even know are out there. I'm just saying. Just having an idea of how you want to be looked at in terms of a consistent basis. Now that means you will have tough conversations. You will say things that people don't like because you will go on and be the greatest go on person. You know what a yes man is? Or, yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, like you know, stop being that person. They're not very convenient to be around. That's why my circle got a lot smaller. I can't, like, you don't want to be the, some of us don't speak up because we don't want to be the sensitive friend of nobody. You know, if I can't say anything around Stan, some things you can't say around me. You can't. It's not okay with me. You say around somebody else, that means you're not around me. Consistency. There's certain names that people will not call me. Very few people call me out of name. In a bad way. Very few. Because I'm interested. People know when you didn't stand, that's his name. I may feel the name, so oh boy, I'm a friend, uh, whatever, there's a bunch of other things you can call me if you choose not to stand. I don't answer the bitch. No attendance, I don't answer to that. Nor do my sisters. They don't. Nor do the women close to me. They don't. I feel like if you stop answering to those things, people will stop calling you that. Period. Teach people how to treat you. That part is only important to me because I just feel like if people call you something enough of anything, sometimes you start to feel like you are that. You know what I mean? I feel like if anybody just calls you a bad name enough, depending on how well you know yourself, you might begin just to believe in whatever it is. You know, dirty, ugly, whatever, stupid, whatever it is. I feel like you can look that consistent, that constant peace that you continue to hear. That's why I talk about my niece off naps and niece and nephews and I have a niece who's uh, four and she has two ideas all the time. Right here, you can see the two-year-old recently. Oh my gosh, how cute are they? Smart, man. So freaking busy. I gotta make her busy. I want her to tie more time than me, so I test her. If I stay walking, test her, I'm like, so what? She's got her. She's following me around the house. I have an empty bottle of water. I drop an empty bottle, I walk away from it. 
She sees it in the Bible. Looks a little bit confused. This is a little drunk baby walk over to her. <laughs> she bends down. She looks at me. I look at her. She looks at me. I look at her. And then I'm like, what are you going to do, baby? <laughs> she pauses like she's got it all figured out. She picks it up, throws it in the trash, and she goes, yeah! And I'm like, yeah! Booyah! Big fix. I celebrate, boy. It's a big freaking deal for me. And I'm not going to be strangers here about my niece. Now, why is it a big deal for me? Let me tell you. Because I've never taught her to do that before. I've never said city. When you see something fall on the ground, you pick it up and you throw it. I've never ever taught her to do that before. But what I'm guessing is she's seen that be done time and time and time again. So then she decides on her own to try it. And then she does it and you go, yay, you celebrate it. It's a big freaking deal for her uncle and her. Yay, so guess what? Every time she sees the baby rip, it's going bye bye. That's just how she rolls, right? That's just how she is. And so then I watch her personality. Sometimes it's a lot like her uncle, her parents, even her grandparents. Like, whoa. And I'm guessing she just seen it be done time and time again. We celebrate, and then she tries it on her own. But then it gets to another ton of bricks. How quickly does two become four? How quickly does four become eight? How quickly does eight become 16, 17, 18, 20, 30? Everyone was on this one. How quickly did the time pass that you can't remember being two? And even before that, yet yeah, the person you are today, even this has been clear, the person you are today is a direct reflection of how you've been treated since you were two and even before that. Major point. Every time I see my niece and nephews, the big up, hey, I didn't know you're so smart, you're incredible, you're so funny, show them what you just smart about like that. You know you can do whatever you want to be in life, you know that, right? He's got to try hard, you know you like it, but every time I see them, that's what happens. Take at least two minutes to do that. Every time I see them, these is nothing that I kiss them. Every time I see them, number one, because I realize they live in a world where people would not love them. Everyone would love them. You ever find that out? Ever had that awkward moment where you thought the entire world loved you? Then you found out like you didn't, right? It kind of hurts a little bit, right? But I feel like I do them do it every single day. Why? Because at some point, they're going to end up in a room like this. They're going to go to college. And someone may be trying to tell them, you're not smart enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not successful enough. You're, you're not something, you're missing something. You're not whatever. You're not good enough. Someone's going to try to tell them that. Now, they may never remember. They may never ever remember that their uncle told them how smart, how incredible, how beautiful. They may never ever remember that, but I like to think that they'll feel it. Deep down in their soul, they feel how incredible someone told them they once were. Even more than major point. There could be people in this room right now. And if not you, then someone that you know, who's lived their entire life without hearing what I'm saying right now. Think about that. Think about that. That someone, and it's unfortunate, and it makes me angry, to be perfectly honest, that people can go 16, 17, 18 years, 18 plus years without ever hearing how great they could be. Guess what? If I have to go 18 years, if I have to go 8 years, if I have to go 8 months of time without hearing how great I could be, I would be pissed too. I'd be angry. I wouldn't be impressed by anything cool you did. Because no one ever told me that I was cool and that I did something cool. So I hate to. Matter of fact, I'm even mad at the people who are happy about life. You ever know, ever happy before? You ever just get mad because you see someone happy? They go like, hey, hey, I'm like, shut up. That's <laughs> so. Like, what? That's so. Why did you tell me that's so? I think that those kind of things happen. We have to know. Last for some of that is kind of a long place to get out. Yeah. Well, we have to know that I believe in finishing stronger than we started. That's exactly what we're going to do throughout this day. Be resilient. Yeah, be creative. Be your own best friend. Be present. Be consistent. Be resilient. I speak from my heart. I speak from what I know. I speak from my research. I speak from who I am. I have to tell you, let's say being a black man is not always easy. I hope I don't make it look that way. Because it's not. It's one of the toughest things. On that earth, to me, but it's me, like, right, so you, you can think it's tough, it's to you. But there's different things. Like, you have no idea what my experience is all. And what you may not realize is, let's say, the better I feel like I'm getting, the more obstacles I experience. That's for me. You may feel the same thing. You may feel the same thing for you. You're a female. So guess what? Everyone's not going to want you to do well just because you're you. I feel like stereotypes exist for a reason, which we'll talk about later. People expect us to be in certain boxes, but when we don't fit those boxes, there is a problem. <laughs> Rising, how appropriate that that word is even attached to 
this right now. That the better you get, the better you'll have to get. The better you get, the better you'll have to get. There's nothing convenient about it. So we're not talking about being resilient. But the purple, black, white, Latino, it does not matter, Native American, Indian, it does not matter. The idea of being resilient, if you're not quite sure what I mean by that, is your ability to bounce back. So, if you all have never given yourself credit for bouncing back before, let me help you out. Bouncing back comes from this not having a perfect life, a perfect experience, and saying, I'm going to school anyway. They knock down, get back into the test, bad relationship with someone that you probably know. I know at least one person that did not go to school because of a bad relationship. Had nothing to do with school, the bad relationship stopped them from going to school. The people who did that in high school, they thought, because I did that in high school, I can go to college. Again, another life that we're kind of telling ourselves, kind of fitting into this mold that some people want us to believe that we just go, okay, you're right. Because some people will tell you that. Some people have told something in this room right now, I don't know if you're built for college. Ha. It's nuts. Maybe they feel like they were built for college. I think that happens. Are you sure? You do know that it's tough, right? That's a conscious doubt that someone tries to kind of place on you on the side. They don't say you can't do it, but they say, you know, it's kind of tough, don't you? Right? Even when it's coming from a place of love, it's real. So even if you know it's coming from a place of love, recognize that you put that in the right place. Like, yes, no, this is difficult. You got that right. Like I said earlier, that's why everyone doesn't have a college degree. That's why everyone's not in college, because it's difficult. Sometimes, this is not always the case, but sometimes people say, oh, college isn't for me, because they think it's difficult. No, what's difficult is sometimes not, let's say, finding a trade, not going to college, and then working full time for the rest of your life without some kind of training or education. That's difficult. That's super tough. Again, you can test the theory if you like, but our idea of being resilient, you also have to be ready. When I say be ready, I mean really excited about dedicating yourself. If you're not a really strong scholar, R E A D Y, ready. Be really excited about dedicating yourself. I don't look at everyone like, yeah, I did it, y'all, oh, yeah. No, I don't do marching band try out of my bedroom every single morning. I don't, but I have to do something, you know? I have to do something. Because I realize this. I know that I have things in my life that other people may never, ever have. I know it for sure. Because they're not willing to do what I'm willing to do to get it. I know. That friend, do you grew up at what time? Did I give you that? Well, you don't want these things, you don't want the things that you say you want. Happiness, love, respect, health, you don't want the things you say you want. But the kicker is, I know there are things in my life that I don't have, that other people have, because I'm not willing to do what it takes to get them. There are things that other people do, my colleagues, and other people I know that are doing some things that I'm not, I'm not doing right now. And that's even saying that I want certain things, I'm not. I'm good right now. I know that. Have to be resilient. Even in your relationships, please practice resiliency in your relationships. You are going to be in a bad one. Even if everything is great, you have not had a crazy him yet, or crazy her, whatever it is, it's, it could get bad at some point, you have to still be resilient. Sometimes you find yourself in arguments, you have no idea what the argument is about. Raise your hand if you've ever been in an argument, had no idea what the argument is about. Keep your hand raised if you see an argument because it felt good. You're like, I don't know what this is about, but it's about good. i I think I can win this one. Like, yeah, no, I think I can win this one. If you ever end up in an argument, you didn't even have, I mean, it's, I'm telling you, it's been a couple times. Like, I've most of the time, it probably happens to guys. If you all aren't married yet, but if you, they did it all the time. Fellas, you end up with some things you had, I mean, you did not ask for at all. Sometimes, ladies, my like, wife's not here, so I can say what I want. All right? Sometimes, don't tell her, okay? I'm afraid of them. All right, go, go. Some things, you know, they set you up, but they say a statement and then follow up with a hard question. But the statement had nothing to do with you. So you want to do that a statement? Hard question. For example, getting dressed. My God. I look so fat in this. We're over here minding our own business. <laughs> oh, well, you can't say anything? Then you don't look fat. You're such a liar. I hate. Whoa, 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 whoa. You had nothing to do with that. Nothing at all. 
minding your own business, statement followed up with a hard question. My gosh, you look so terrible. Oh, you can't say anything, you can't say anything, baby, you look great. You're lying, you look at me yet. Oh, uh, yeah, now I'm looking. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it happens all the time. Worst part I've ever been in my life, have no milk. <laughs> Treat milk. I can't mess with milk, can I? Apparently, I can't. Want to know why, fellas? I'm going to tell you, you can even ask me. This is how you life. I had no idea that like 50 different kinds of milk existed on planet Earth. I had no idea. Relations go to the next level. I was like, how do you know what I'm talking about? I'm like, oh, baby, no. I got you. Back in my ear, I got no problem. Bam! I got to the store. I was like, oh my God. <sighs> we got 2% CMO call back. I actually count on the back. I hate my life. <laughs> FML. I grabbed the whole of my fellas because it's good cookies. That's why I did it. I mean, we're, we're smart. We're simple creatures. That's how we think. All right, I got back in my day. It's like, I can do it. Here's the milk. She's like, what is this? <laughs> Sweetie, it's the milk. Yeah, she's like, you know, I only drink 2%. Let me tell you this. I had no idea 2% from rock right my world to this day. We were arguing about things that happened when I was 2 years old. And she was 5 years old. And she was 13. She was crazy. I knew she thought she was crazy. But I could be like, girl, you crazy. It was a crazy situation the whole thing. I don't know if y'all have ever been in an argument and you feel like you survived an argument. Do you ever feel like that? Like you survived an argument everything is cool? But then you may find the very passive best way of letting you know that things are not alright. Happened to me. The next time I went to her place, she was playing me a song. A lot like this. Go ahead. Everyone can. 
I know today we'll be spending some time here. Please, please, please stay locked and loaded. We're here to get this thing right. I promise that they will get even better as we go along. Uh, feel free at the real stampede. That's what we've got. Any questions or anything like that? Hit me there whenever I'm here for the day. As soon as he responds, we're happy to give him a round of applause. Big time. Let's get this. This. I am I'm completely obsessed with, with seeing success of others. Completely. It makes my heart smile. It truly, truly does. I think being here today just goes, hey, everyone's not going to do what it takes to be successful. But we will. All right? Thank you so very much. I'll see you later. <laughs> we care before we have to care. So in terms of this year, that's a great friend, famous black, I don't know what happened, why, and most of the time you don't care at all, you just mad through that call you back, that message you back, you already know what's going on in life. Two major facts I'm gonna shout about these things. One, these friends I had, they were, they were of Middle Eastern descent. And number two, is this picture I took was in the summer of 2001. Well, did I say it? Sounds like a long time ago. I'm in this place. All right, now what was that? What was this summer of 2001? It was before when? Before the 9-11. I don't know about you all, but I don't remember exactly where it was when I was doing it all happened. In fact, I had friends who still didn't dump on me while I was hearing from my friends. And I just you know, summertime came and went September. I told my little friendly thing where my phone rings, I recognize it was my kid. Where have you all been? Well, Sam, don't you know what's going on in the world right now? I'm like, of course, we'll do it. Well, Sam, I don't think you're any different. Then you have the patriotic American friends beating us up on our way to class, harassing us, or whatever it is. You know, many of us, we move back to our countries, or we move to California, because while things were intense all over this country, things were nearly as intense in California as they were in New York or Washington, D.C. Like, we were friends of, like, just because you're from the Middle East, and you're a terrorist. Like, I don't know if you've ever said something in any of your head is that like, music and harps are supposed to play with you seven. Like, that's the same reason why you can give the best advice, can you take any of it? Like, you can solve your best friend's problem in two minutes, you can solve yours in two years. No, I said that and I thought that it was fantastic. We got on the phone, and to this day, we've never, never spoken again. And as a matter of fact, if I saw him today, I probably wouldn't recognize him. But then, it stuck as you kind of, it not on me a little bit, it stuck as a lot of it, because I'm like, how many times have people tried to trivialize an experience or feeling that I had? without ever really asking or thinking about it you know, as I talk to them about it. Like people just go about things and say, by the way, things that mean so much more to me than it does to them. And that's where you all come in this particular exercise. Because it's first time things. Just because I am doesn't mean what you think that they were saying. That's really prescribed for you all. If you have one, I want you to raise your hand. Because I know that someone's going to say, ah, they took mine. I'm going to give you all a quick, uh, Quick example, and then we're going to go from there. Now, I will tell you, this is something that you will warm into. It's going to feel a little bit uh, at first, but as soon as you catch the hang of it, piece of cake. Everyone ready to say yeah? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Now we're together. I guess we're all working out nice. So you can say, shut up. You can say, just because I'm a female doesn't mean I'm inferior. Alright, that can be hers. That's a pretty good example. Pretty good example. Cool. Are you okay about this? Yeah. You know, this is actually a scary part of your example. That's right. You're a person. So you can say, just because I'm a female doesn't mean that I'm inferior. Alright. Now, here's the thing. This first round, I want you to say anything having to do with you. Anything having to do with you. Right. Any other fact that you both said it all? That's awesome. I mean, you didn't cheat. But I do you know that they exist in that book, there's about roughly 150 of them. So they're there. And I've collected over thousands of them over this time through this program. So anyone have what they want to start with? Yes, Adrian. Because I'm not. I guess because I'm just having to do the science. Good. Good. All right, Adrian. Here's the thing, if no one raises their hand, in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, you are going to point to someone on that side of the room that you do not know. Here we go. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Yes. Uh, 
Just because of the Spanish female doesn't mean I'm never getting pregnant at a young age. Yes. So no one's really saying, I heard someone say they got them, but they had them. You got them. Yes.
Because many of us feel in union so many times. Many of us feel invincible too. I feel like just because you see me doesn't mean I don't feel invisible. Some of us walk around every single day feeling invisible. Like no one sees you. Like you feel like someone just looks right through you. You ever done that or happened to you before? I'm sure we've done it to people though. But I mean, when it happens to you, I mean, it's, it's rough. Like sometimes I just want people to just, hey, just acknowledge your presence, especially if your worst day. We can talk about that. Think about your worst day. You wish your worst day. Someone just said, hey, and wanted nothing from you. Just recognize you, let me know that you still exist. Sometimes we miss those opportunities because we're walking up and down the street like this. We've not dropped the thing, yet we won't look up to the sky. Not dropped anything. There's not anything popping, there's nothing on the ground. You know where your feet are going, you're not going to leave you, I promise. Hey, right. they should. <laughs> so, why are we looking on the ground? Why are we looking on the ground? Like, it doesn't mean that people are going to stop you, but I know sometimes we're on autopilot. Anyone know what I mean by autopilot? <coughs> What's that? Just do it again. What are you going to say? What's that? Yeah, moving without thinking. Because I feel like we have pre I'm sorry. I feel the wrong way. Sorry. I feel like we have. Okay, cool. Okay. No, that's me. I feel like we have uh, pre recorded responses sometimes, right? In which we just. They're just plugged in. Don't bother me. I'm on autopilot. Don't mess with that. For instance, you ever, who's ever been on a plane before? Most of you have been on a plane before. We're going to take account of what usually happens. You know, they say, have a nice flight. What do you say? You too. They're not going anywhere, are they? They're at work, but you don't care because I'm on autopilot. Don't bother me right now. Guys, we're most guilty of this. I'd be like, hey, what's up? You might be like, what's up? We don't even know what's up, then we know, but we don't care because we're on autopilot and don't dare stop me and tell me. Is it whatever stops you while you're on autopilot? Ruined your whole day. You'd be like, yo, what's happening? You're like, but actually, oh, here we go. Drama, drama, drama. Like, you want to hear that crap right here? That's the number right now. Like, that's why we say that. We don't even, like, we don't really want to know. What's up? Like, you're walking too fast and you're going to even stop you. I think it happens. But again, autopilot. And this will take you off of autopilot. One more before we go to our next track, and it will get more difficult. Who's got one more? In Ah, yes. Oh, yeah, two, three. Not good, yes. Okay, I have many tasks, like, just because I'm a black woman doesn't mean I have a lot of attitude and power. Good, yeah, we have to have a chance to Jasmine. Jasmine, and just because I'm a black woman doesn't mean I'm a black woman. Yeah, good, because this is a black woman doesn't mean I'm a black woman. Man, I knew I saw one. I'm not a black woman. Yes, I don't know. But this is your what? This is your star? Oh, this is your stud. Oh, this is your stud muffin. I'm sorry. <laughs> Wait, Terry's gave me so loud. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know. I thought he said star. I'm like, cool. But he said stud, T dub. Alright, cool. So, um, anything else before this next round? Can I move on to here, guy? Yeah. Cool. So we had Cool. Uh, so now, race. Anything having to do with race? Anything having to do with race? Jasmine. Yes, they are. Huh? Just because I'm black is not going to like French. Okay, but by the way, I think it's more interesting who doesn't like French. Who doesn't? Raise your hand. So we can have you next to me to I'm sorry. It's going to be delicious. It will be an honest for you. Cool. All right, great. This is what we're going to do. We're going down this line. Oh, sorry. Down this line. Uh, that just happened. Here we go. Sorry, we're going to Jasmine. Oh, seriously? This is Jasmine Square right here. Jasmine and Jasmine. All right, cool. Yes. Matter of fact, I don't even need a microphone. These are nice guys. Cool. Cool. Here you go.
to some point the same thing that I've been carrying. I'm De'Aaron, and just because I'm black doesn't mean I'm a scholarship working athlete. I'm Jasmine, and just because I'm Mexican doesn't mean I'm here undocumented.
but we have to gather on the intel. We use social media and television too much. I mean, there are actual television stations we know this that are geared to each and every one of us. That are geared to make us feel a certain way. It's all paid advertising. They are geared to make us feel a certain way. Sometimes about certain people, sometimes about certain situations. Like that is why sometimes television is this. That's good and bad. The bad part is when all you do is use one television station to know about me. If we don't gather on intel, we can find ourselves watching one TV station, watching one, uh, listening to one radio station, watching some movie, getting on Twitter or Facebook, watching all those things, and never gather on your own intel, and all those are great. But all those are also things that can make me hate you, and not even know you. Sometimes we walk around, we have hate, dislike, and we don't even know who you. Have you ever not liked someone that didn't even know him? That, oh, you know what, I'm being honest right now, right? Like, this was you, and you're like, oh, who does she think she is? <laughs> Carrying a purse. <laughs> who even carries a purse? Most women suck ass, you know, at least 2013, I don't know. So I'm saying, but we do these things. They happen. Sometimes, but I feel like what's important is what you do once you realize that that, 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 uh, see, that bad moment has captured you. Like you had that checkup from the neck up. Really quick, everyone say checkup from the neck up. <laughs> but you had that checkup from the neck up. Like you realize, whoa, like you ever said something super inappropriate and then you call yourself like, oh, 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 thanks. Again, I'm the only one. All the chuckers are also guilty. Okay, it's making sure. You know what I mean? Because sometimes you catch yourself. That's our sixth sense. Like, you realize when something's bad. Oh, we realize that we know this. But what do you do with that information? What do you do? Again, do you continue to be the yes person? Kind of lets everything just ride? I believe my next set of years ago said, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for everything. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for everything. It doesn't always happen, but honestly, I feel like Sometimes there's those, uh, like, the, where the clouds and everything perfectly, like, the universe perfectly aligns itself with an opportunity to make change in someone's life. I think those, I think that happens. You, for everyone. I mean, from when we're getting up to our own, there's those times where, there are those times that happen, and it seems like everything slows down, and it gives you a chance to do something. Now, what you do with that is completely up to you. Some of us have walked away from those opportunities, myself included, where you had a chance to make a change in someone's life and you let it ride. Now, I don't know if that bothered you or you went home and you kind of wanted like, I should have never done it before. Like, I wish I, I wish I had said something. God, like, it kept you up. Well, it's basically thing that happened to me about a year and a half ago. I was in this Vietnamese restaurant, love Vietnamese food, and they were fun before. Like some fun. Oh. Hey, 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 Everybody else in the high five. Cool. I love fuss. So anyway, the place like it's uh, over two or three hours. My wife, my wife and I, my friend, Fat, he's with me. We're hanging out, we're enjoying ourselves. Then like 11 people come to, you know, come to the restaurant super late. They're young, probably, you know, your age. I'm like, cool, I turn around, I check out people now, and the 11 people, they're 10 Asian and one black guy. He's like, Stan, why do you even know that? Uh, I'll be honest with you, I do race inventory. Anybody else? Anybody else? <laughs> All the black people and women. Like, yes, I do that. Yes. Awesome. If you don't know what race inventory is, it means we check things out. Before we sit down good, we need to know how many of us are in the room in case something goes down and we need to get out of the room. Race inventory. I saw some of you all creeping in there like, one, two, three. <laughs> we're good, we're good, we're good. <laughs> I think everybody does. So, I do a quick race inventory, I turn back around and enjoy my fun. Then I begin to ear hustle. You all know what ear hustling is? It's big nose and pretty much, but it's a cool way of saying it. I'm ear hustling the back table with all I love them far. Now I begin to hear things. Now the first thing I heard was, hey brother, why don't you get some fried chicken? Whoa! And the whole table you lost some laughter. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? Anyway. Some of y'all made laugh later. That's what was funny. Okay, cool. I'm tripping out. Immediately, I start to turn around. My wife grabbed me like, Stan, now is not the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you were busy. Why did I have a crash? No, my crash. I'm going to the next one. I'm going to the next one. I'm going off the line. I'm like, fine. Of course, my friend Fat's across the table from me. Because usually, my back is never to the door. 
Sure, we was, I guess, I was always, you know, just raised with Facebook. And my friend Fab on the other side, so he's watching, he's like, you reach for the like, stand. It's cool. I ain't gonna be cool, because I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna say anything. Everything's fine. Five minutes passed, like, they were having a good time, and they were laughing, joking. Then it's crazy, because it's like, as soon as something was said, the rest of was quiet. Next thing I heard, man, please, nigga. Ah, I'm a oh, <laughs> You almost all started to incredible heart. Like, I was mid green, I was almost forest street, I wasn't quite in, but I was on my way. My wife put the tiger in the room, like, boy, you better not go there. Let me go, let me go, let me go. I was like, cool, it's no problem, no big deal. But the entire time, I never heard this black kid say anything. I never heard him say a word. I was peeking over my shoulder and saw him sitting there the entire time. He cracked a smile, looked at me the entire time. All right, cool. Eventually, for a moment, I saw myself. So then it comes time to pay, we're leaving, no problem. Me and my friend family walk into the register, when we walk to the register, my wife walks to the door. And the door was obviously on the other side of the table. It was funny when I turned around, I saw her at the door, and she looked at me like slow motion, like, no! I'm like, ha, 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 ha. Anyway, she had no time to run, I was off, all right? So then pretty much, I walked over, and as I'm walking past me, I didn't even talk, I, I, did not, I did not know these people from that. I had no idea who they were. I walked by them, and I put my hand on his shoulder, and I said, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for everything. He said, that's word of the day. I said, no, no, no. That's a phrase. <laughs> <laughs> Walk smooth at the door. Why are you going to wait? Why are you going to wait? That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That was going to keep me up. Like, I felt like I was going to miss sleep had I not addressed that. Had I not said something. Like, again, I tried. Right? I tried. They foiled my attempt to say something. And then the stars perfectly aligned. I went to pay. She walked to the door. Like it's a message, I'm going in. <laughs> That's pretty much what happened. Now, for him, I don't know if at that moment, because he had got friends all around and everything, I don't know if he thought about it in that moment. What, what I'm hoping, what I'm praying, what I prayed that night, is that when he went home, right before he fell asleep, he thought about that. Like if I can stand for something, I will fall for everything. You see, you don't have to be black to understand my plan. You just have to be a human being. I know that each and every one of us in this room has probably sat somewhere silent but someone said something that hurt our hearts. Not just hurt your feelings, but hurt your heart, hurt, hurt you to the core. One of the biggest, in theory, one of the biggest lies in the nursery rhymes is sticks and stones may break your bones, but words will never hurt you. In theory, perfect. In reality, completely flawed. Some of us have broken bones, straight muscles, hurt ourselves, fell down, scraped our knees, and guess what? It's pretty evil today. Matter of fact, it doesn't even hurt me. But most of us, remember something being said to us that was so violent and mean that it hurts your heart to this very single day because we haven't dealt with it. That's why we have to be able to say something. Maybe not all the time. I feel like those are those battles we have to choose. Every battle is worth fighting. But there is some time when the world slows down and the world asks you to pay attention. Because if you're not standing for you, just like sometimes I'm not saying it for me. Sometimes I'm saying it for my niece Sydney that I was talking about earlier. Because sometimes Sydney may run across one of your little brothers or sisters or cousins. And I want that meeting to be okay. I want them to be super comfortable in their skin so it doesn't matter what the world is saying about them. That they'll be okay. They, want, they won't want to hurt themselves. They won't want to hurt other people because someone else has hurt them. They will be better today than they were yesterday. That is what we're getting to. I understand the end is breaking down this moment. Obviously, some of y'all will go back to your books and you'll see all the different just because it's giving more time. I've done this for retreats. I've done days of just because I have those in me in days. But there are 150 of those that cover the race, religion, sexual orientation, political affiliation. You name it, they're in there. Again, it's kind of jogging your memory. Some of them will be very, they'll be very elementary, but they're all in there for a reason. So if it's something that like, you feel like you've heard all the time, someone else has never ever heard it. So then you find yourself having more checkups from the back. And you begin to gather your own, your own intel and paying attention to things that maybe you didn't pay attention before. Now, it would be great to think, oh, we're going to leave and it's going to be perfect. It will not be. But, again, it's not about being perfect. It has to be about being better today than you were yesterday. That is what we 
go inside people, professionalize people, and sing. But the thought that you think that other people want you to be perfect drives you insane. And also understand this. The more uncomfortable someone is with who they are, the more uncomfortable they will try to make you feel about who you are. The more uncomfortable someone is with who they are, the more uncomfortable they will try to make you feel about who you are. That means that person who's always doubting you, dogging you, making fun of you, like you're the constant butt of jokes, not the good jokes, like you're just the constant butt of jokes, and you're even wondering to yourself, number one, why am I even still friendly with these people? But why do they always have something to say about me? Why, 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 why? why? You find the people who do that the most are the ones who are trying to make you think so much about them that you never think to question what they had going on with themselves. Now, if you go home, look at the mirror, what's wrong with me? I need to change something. I need to dress better. I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to, I need to talk different. I need to do something. I need to change me. That is what the object is. So you never think in your mind, something's wrong with it. Everyone will not think this way. The most creative people on planet Earth think differently. And they also take some of the most simple, com most simple, 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 complex things, and they make them simple. They can see it. They find out the way that they learn, and then they capitalize on it. I want you guys to understand that we're invested in your success. We want to make sure that we're providing you with the right resources, the right advice and putting you in the right direction so that you're successful. Especially when it comes down to the RISE program and the SSS program, we want you to understand that we're working together so that you're pipeline through the educational system. So you're working with Angela and you're working with us and we're helping you get to where you need to be. Guys, I also want you to understand that it took a lot of money to put this program together. These types of programs are not cheap. They're actually very, very expensive. And that money and the support comes funnels through Dr. Kirksey's office, and it comes out of the RISE budget, and it also comes out of the SSS budget. So I want you to understand that, that whenever you go through all our programming, we want you to be engaged because we're putting a lot into it. But guys, even though these things aren't cheap and they are expensive, we want you to understand that we're willing to invest money and time in you so that you are successful. And before we do some raffles, Angela's gonna give you a few words of encouragement as well. Um, so like this was saying, this is a big investment, but it's an investment that's worth it. And when you come to our offices, whenever you come to Rise, SSS, go to Justice Offices, who's myself, Bianca back there, Jeronda, Brenda, um, John Blue, please know that, um, do you guys know what an investment is, first of all? What's an investment? Sorry. Something that increases in value over time, in value over time, that's true. So we might kind of plant a seed in your head sometimes and be like, hey, have you kind of thought of this? Or, you know, you say you your major, why are you saying it? Little, little conversations that, that begin that way, those are our investments. That's what we're putting into, like, your little piggy wings. But at the end, all of that increases, and all of that is going to grow. So our, that small investment that we try to put into you guys, small, 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 big investment that we put into programs like these, is so that you guys can continue to grow. So hopefully these words, you'll remember them and you'll know um, that people like, uh, that, that are in diversity academic support, like SSS, like RISE, we do it happily because we know that whatever it is that we spend on you guys, y'all are gonna go out into the world and become big, big things. You have no idea um, the success that comes out of the programs that we have and that's because of your hard work and your dedication that you're willing to put in to the program that homework that you're willing to do, the events that we tell you guys to do. And sometimes, like Dr. Chris said, it does not make any sense what we tell you to do, but in the end, I think especially if you're going to write it um, it doesn't make any sense, but I promise you it will as soon as those internships start rolling in, as soon as those opportunities start rolling in, as soon as you start getting awards, you'll see that we really, truly care about you guys and we love you guys. And all of you, you're... Some people might say, my job is to invest all day. My job is to look at cells um, in, in my laboratory all day. But our job is, my job is 68 people. My job is literally 68 really people that I invest in every single day. Same thing with SSS. Our job is you. 
So please know that we are a resource um, and we truly, truly care. And we spend our days and evenings <laughs> thinking about how we can help you guys. So um, know that we truly, truly care. And something I wanted to say earlier is um, just because I'm a Latina coordinator does not mean that I don't love my black kids and my white kids and my Asian kids just as much as I love my Hispanic kids. So please know that.